Well, out walking the living turd distributor again, don't you know? There's good reason, I'm back in training. Hi, welcome to the channel if you're new here, and welcome back if you've been here before. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty damn psyched for this one. Jesus! Oh, mate! Oh, yeah, baby! And you know, when it starts with a moonwalk, involuntarily or otherwise, this is gonna be a good one. But there's a reason, I gotta say, I'm out here with the dog. I'm actually looking for the last pieces of me mojo. Bear with. It's not over here, and it's not behind here. Fear not though, because I've got a pretty good idea where the last pieces of my mojo might be. And this is where the big stunker kicks into action. I'm going to be traveling a whole country from east to west in the next few days and week. Sounds amazing, but bear with. To one of the places that we love the most on the channel, yep. The land of dragons and sheep, the one and only Wales. I've got some absolutely legendary spots that I want to check out. Hikes, beaches, waterfalls on beaches, the Puffelis, and even where we're about to start, a homage to the werewolf in London. Oh yeah. I'll tell you a little bit more about it when we get there, but for now, I'm gonna have to get the crib and everything packed up and set for the big stunker. This is gonna be a legendary, mate. Let's do this. Well, the weather's looking rather inviting this morning, isn't it? <laughs> and truth be known, it took me a little bit longer than I thought to get the crib ready, like a whole day and night. So now, we're through the bed o'clock, early doors, Friday morning, but we are ready to rumble. But I do have one issue that I need to address before we leave. For those that are regular to the series, you'll be well aware of these little characters. Yes, they do look like those characters from that Starry Warsy type movie, but no, due to copyright, they're not. For those of you that don't know, this is Dave and he's been around for quite some time and as with his mate, they bring the light side and a good vibe for the trips that we go on and hopefully a bit of good luck. This guy on the other hand has never had a name. He was born in Scotland and I've come up with a name for him. I'm gonna call him Skid. Reason being, he was born in Scotland and it's a homage to the one and only Sid James. A mix of Scotland and Sid he becomes Skid. So, Skid and Dave, bringing a good vibe and bringing a good luck. Fingers crossed you do, because the weather's a little bit normal. But let's get on the road, let's go on down there. Let's go! Mate, he's telling me 65 miles is gonna take me an hour and 45 minutes. I really hope something's wrong there, that sounds weird. Then again, we're heading to Wales, aren't we? Oh my days. Oh, no way, check it out. There's no markings on the road. Yep, we've pretty much landed. Got about 10 minutes to go. Thing, and I'm not sure, but I think I'm cutting around the outskirts of Hay on Rye Wall and then heading up towards the Glossop Pass. I don't know, I guess we'll find out when we get there, but mate, this fog hasn't cleared the whole way and I don't think it's going to clear all day. And we're hunting werewolf spots. It don't bode well, does it? It's a bit spooky. <laughs> what am I doing? I tell you what though, fog or not, it's a real nice time of year. Start of winter back end of autumn, we've still got all the autumn colours on the trees. Oh, so psyched to be out here at the minute, real good. Cossup, oh wow, what? <laughs> what kind of name is that for a place? Good news though, and comforting news. My geography skills and also my navigation skills haven't got any better because we're heading down towards Aon Rye now. So, yeah. Oh, this is it as well, Aon Rye. Good little spot this. We've stayed here before, there's a car park where you're legally allowed to stay overnight from I think it's eight at night to late in the morning. So I almost stayed there last night because I was planning on leaving last night. <sighs> Didn't happen. 
Right, proper bumble fluff roads then, and I've just thought, you know, I've linked this location through the Komu to the Google Maps. And if you're a regular to the series, you'll remember I was doing that in Northumberland and it was taking me, Jesus, to the wrong location. Oh, nightmare. Ah, oh, car in front. <laughs> Crap, this is a long way to reverse. Oh, shit, hold up. That's my paintwork. Nah. <laughs> what a freaking nightmare. Aye, aye, aye. Single tracks. Welcome to Wales. Damn. Oh, crap, man. I've got a whole freaking week of this. Freaking A. And it starts already. Aye, aye, aye. Well, this is pretty legendary. Check it out. We've got Schnarf in the middle of the road. All sort of modern track. Whew, just bracken and trees and whatnot. And moorland coming up on the outskirts and fog to boot i mean if ever you wanted a more ominous spot for werewolfing this is it i can't believe it it's so cool i'll tell you about it there's two trails that i wanted to hit up here one is like one fact which is supposed to be like i think one of the highest points in wales south wales blah 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 and the other one what i'm gonna hit is hay bluff and i was looking at it and this is where the thing comes in and it mentioned there's a point on the trail where they filmed a section at the start of a werewolf in London. Oh, mate, it's an American werewolf in London. You know the movie? I think it's a bit where he's like, don't stray off the path. And he strays off the path like a moppet. And I think we're going to be straying off the path. <laughs> Wicked. I'm so excited to be checking it out. So, yeah, just got to get there. I think I'm about five minutes away. So, And on top of that, where I'm parking, I think, is where I'm going to be for the night. Right next to the spot from a whale in London. I must be mad. And, ho oh, ho, yes! Look at that cloud inversion, man. Oh, that looks mega. Wow. Nearly there. Oh, I've never been happier to see motor homes and vans, man. I really hope they stay the night. I need some company. <laughs> right, let's ditch on the end of the thing. We've landed. We're here. Legend. Cloud inversion in front. Happy days. things where I do the drone shots and then clickly click on the car and I'm already like on the trail but you have no idea how cold it is it is absolutely freezing out there I'm literally shaking I've only been out of the car like two minutes oh my god I'll go get some food in there and some warm coffee and then get some serious layers on I might even bring out the BFC today the big freaking coat you know you know I'm not sure all right Give me a minute. It works, damn it. <laughs> Let's go. I'm just looking and I'm wondering where to start this little bit because this area is amazing. With this fog today, it's just stunning. Cloud inversion going on down the way, wild horses, and this is the spot, no way. Look how close it is to where I'm staying for the night. Oh my days, I hadn't realised. And I wish I knew which bit in the movie it was. I think it's at the start after they've left the pub and then they start wandering around the moors and he veers off the path. This is it, werewolf in London, right there. Somewhere around here is a werewolf. Pretty legendary and also pretty freaky. I mean, I've just gone from like being sketched out in Derbyshire and now I'm putting myself in the spot where a werewolf in London was filmed. I don't know if you see this. Do you see this on the film? I'm going to have to check the clips. Like the rickety old sign and... Mate, listen to it as well. Oh, it's absolutely silent. There's a couple of people around, but this is going to be real eerie tonight. Stay on the road. 
keep clear of the moors. Right, I wanted to show you this first because this is supposed to be number nine on the trail. So yeah, I'm gonna cut back all of about 30 meters and then head up the trail. Let's go. I was gonna read the name of the, <laughs> the trail out, but it's called Hay Bluff, which is the area in the, like, the hillside. Twumpa Loop <laughs> from Crosswell or Crosswell Nightmare. It's supposed to be about six miles, so it should take, damn it, about three hours. What oh, crud. Damn it, I hadn't anticipated that. I thought it was going to be a couple of hours, you know, which would have meant I'd get back at half three instead of half four, which is going to be absolutely pitch black. I have got head torch, but, oh, mate, we don't fancy light. Sketching around in this sort of terrain, losing me way. Better use what three words and get me location for me car on here quick. <laughs> right, it should bring us around some lost spots. Obviously, our views are going to be a little bit limited today, but uh, we'll see how we go, man. It should be legend. And it's so good to be out here today. I'm absolutely psyched. I've been waiting for this trip a long time. It's been a busy old few weeks with the channel. It's been wicked. We've also had some head, headache stuff and stress on the side, so let's finally get out on this one, which we've been talking about for a while. Yeah, pucker, mate. <laughs> Look at me spot for the night. This is me made up out in the wilderness for the next week to 10 days. Cool, right. Let's try not to lose the trail at the start. Don't stray off the path. Crap, that moment when you're halfway up the first mountain and you realise <sighs> you forgot to bring liquid. Damn it, all in the car. <sighs> Only another five and a half miles and about two and a half hours of sweating it out with no liquid. And my throat's dry already, eh? This has got some nice munchies. Tell you what though, it's not getting any warmer. It's just cold. I'm not too bad on my clothes and my head and stuff like that. It's my circulation, my hands and feet get cold, but uh, oh yes. This is going to be my five minutes of fame. I'm psyched about this because I can become the Zoolander hand model, JP Pruitt. Oh yeah, check these bad boys out. New gloves, sir. Oh yes. And I've got to be honest, I'm pretty psyched with these because I've been trying to get some things together for wild camping and snowboarding through the winter. And these pretty much tick all the boxes on the list. They're absolutely legendary. They're like dual 3M lead inside, so they're proper warm. They're triple water resistant. They're goat skin, so they're really comfy. Got extra padding on there. All your gobbins and ties for snowboarding and hiking. And the thing with it is, this is it, because like, I've done quite a bit of snowboarding over the years, so I've gone through quite a lot of gloves, I've got to be perfectly honest. And if I really am honest, these are probably, price-wise, like a low-grade snowboard glove and a mid-range, like, all-purpose glove. But in terms of quality, I'd say they're like, defo mid-range, like, all-purpose glove, and definite a mid-range ski snowboard glove. They really are decent quality i can say that from experience you know what i mean but the piece de resistance oh check this bad boy out oh yeah dun 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 they're freaking heated gloves and they heat up in eight seconds they've got three heat settings on them and apparently like the highest setting they'll last two and a half hours the lowest setting they'll last seven hours take about four and a half hours to charge but they're already warm they are absolutely legendary and not a bad little thing to bring out on the mountain for today Wicked mate. Right, let's get on the trail. Damn, finally up on the flat bit, I think. That was hard work, man. I think I'm out of practice, well, certainly out of energy. A bowl of cereals and a bit of a cheese on toast this morning, just ain't cutting it, you know. Couldn't get bananas. There's like a shortage on bananas. I don't, want, I don't know what's going on. Maybe they've stopped growing or something. But yeah, Idler, Powak, even the corner shop, man. None of them had right there. Gutted. I'm gonna have to find some on the trail. Right, let me have a look. <laughs> Probably at the trail up where I'm going, cause can't see both. I think it's this way. I'm gonna head up to Hey Bluff. Do, 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 do. I don't know what it's called. It's called Hey Bluff, but uh, yeah, I say Joe, innit? Mate, I used to love that tune. Man, when I lived in Austria, 
doing my snowboarding for like two seasons, there was an Irish band there that used to play in the local bar. I might have told this story before, but yeah. Oh man, I used to play once a week in that bar. One of the tracks, hey Joe, it's wicked man, just that vibe, you know, all one side of the room, hey dude, oh hey dude, uh, da, da, da. and then the other side, hey dude, it's wicked man. You remember them things, don't you? The good times, man. And it really was snowboarding every day for like a year. What a dream, what a life. Was epic. He's working a little restaurant over there, hotel. Got room there, free accommodation. Two, three hours in the morning on the mountain by half ten every day. Finish it half five, back to the restaurant for three hours till about half seven, eight, and then out on the last for the night. Oof, paralytic, get up again in the morning, do it all over. Wicked times, mate. You do. He used to live on a four pack of cans of Red Bull every day, and in Austria at that time, they were twice as strong as everywhere else. I remember sitting on the lift sometimes, like shaking my DTs and stuff. Not good, but young, dumb, and full of energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn, look how thick and fast this fog's coming in. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it's literally licking across the bracken or the stuff, you know. But in the distance, oh, 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 the first triggy of the trip, man. This is getting a proper one, you know. Let's go. And it's got a Welsh dragon, mate, which is absolutely fantastic. I love you, Wales, mate, and all of you peeps. Thanks for having me yet again, man. A little slap, ba -doo, ba -doo -doo. and a tickle, you know, you know. Send them, man. I'm thinking, here's the thing, I want to set up a Facebook group, because I've got a Facebook page, but I want something where you guys can interact with each other. Let me know if you'd be up for it. And then you can start posting things like your slap and tickles, your squeaky gates, your favourite spots, and we have a proper community there. Let me know in the comments if you want to set it up. And I try and set it up before Christmas, so yeah, just something else. Let's build that community, let's build that good vibe, shall we? Because I'll tell you what, it's a good vibe here today, mate. There's no views at all. Oh, and I don't give a flying. She isn't it? You know. <laughs> it's just wicked, isn't it? Right, we've got <laughs> some funky little spots on this trail. And as it's getting a little bit late, I think we'll get a bit better. <laughs> Get a wriggle on, let's go. Because the next point on the map and trail is called Twampa, and it's a southeastern mountain in the Black Mountain range, and it's also known as Lord Hereford's Knob. Oh, bless you! Thank you so much. I made up a ah, proper knob on the trail. Don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, just step right in it there, you know. Ah, oh, mate, bless you. Lord Erifer's knob. Yeah, I don't know if I want to see it now, do you know what I mean? Might be a bit grotesque. Oh, beshaggled and... Ooh. I'm just thinking, you know, like with the fog today, I bet this place is fantastic view-wise when it's clear, you know. Like all this way, this is Wales, and then all over that side, a little bit further over about half a click, it's uh, the border for England. So you literally like, you can traverse England and Wales over there. I think there's another little mound or something called Cat's Head or some summit cat. But yeah, I thought, I was originally thinking of doing that. And there's another one that I was on about earlier, that one fact. But yeah, it may be worth coming back here in the summertime. Or, yeah, you know, on a good clear day. Oh, wow, check it out as well. You're talking to that fog, it looks like it might start clearing. Be happy to get a little view, won't it? Check these out as well. The only guest sent me one of these as well. I'd wanted one of these for a while. John had one of these, the guy who gave me the roof box a long, long time ago. It's basically just a hand warmer, but it's a real good one. I don't know what temperature it goes up to. I think it goes up to about 50 degrees or something. No, still going. Wow. Now, 55 is your top degree, goes down to about 25. Heats up really quick. It has got a safety device on it, actually, so it won't like burn your hand out. Pretty cool with a little display as well. I think you can like hold it and then it'll tell you what percent power it's got left as well. That's pretty sweet, man. It takes two and a half hours to charge. Absolute spanking. Another good little item that I'm gonna be able to use for wild camping. Just keeping yourself warm, you know. That in the winter, it's paramount, isn't it? And one of them is a nice little thing. 
You know, always like to shove it in your sock or your shoe, warm your shoes up for 10 minutes before you put your shoes on and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Damn it, it's getting nice and warm as well. Yeah, wicked. And, yes, it does look like it's clearing a little bit. Or maybe it's just because we're coming down a nil. I don't know. Nearly at uh, the cock, though. <laughs> oh, no. The knob. Sorry. Oh, it is starting to clear a little bit wicked, although I think we're heading that way. But look, check it out. There's another car camping spot for the night. There's a number of them around here. I'm half tempted to move around to this one. That looks pretty spanking. It's a bit more out of the way, eh? To be honest, I think this spot is the gloss of past car park. And it does look rather nice, doesn't it? Look at the colours and everything down there. I'm not sure how much of a view you get, but it's definitely got a spanking looking view from here. I'm not sure if you get that from the actual parking spot though, but I am tempted to move. Looks good. A bit more out of the way, isn't it? A bit more private. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> there's a few tasty bog patches on this trail, man. Look at this one. It looks like someone's carved out a bit of the land here, but, oh God. Oh man, it really is pretty bad. Oh, I don't want to sink. Ooh, mama. Yeah, but it's coming up to one of them like quintessential Brecon Beacon Mountains. Hang on. Look, with that like quintessential cut that they've all got, like corn do or penny van or something. Stunning, they really are. So unique. And wow, the cloud inversion just gets better and better. Really is. Only bad thing is, I've got to go all the way up here, cut all the way around, and somewhere cut all the way back down. I'm not even halfway yet, and it's three o'clock. Common sense is telling me to cut back along that road and that cut back to the crib. But I really want to see this dude's knob. I mean, Lord Erifer's knob, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's a point on the trail, and it'd be a shame not to like cut it. I think we'll get mostly the trail in light, and then the last sort of third of it looks like it's on the road, so yeah, might be in the dark. Hey, I've got a torch. <sighs> just got to get to the top of the hill. I've just seen some kid, probably in his early 20s, maybe look younger, all his army gear on with a kilo bag on his back. Must have been at least 20 kilos. It looked massive, honestly. And he was trekking up here at a right pace. About off my ASO. You know. <laughs> oh, wow. I've come all prepped with Eaty gloves, beanies, arm warmers, and the coat with the extra layer. I didn't bring the BFC, I just don't want to carry it, it's too bloody heavy. And now, oh mate, winter or not, I'm sweating my chunger off. Absolutely roasting. God knows how that geezer with that 30, 40 kilo pack feels. Crikey, worst of it is though, I'm a little bit parched. <laughs> really wish I brought some liquid with me, man. Got it. Good news. We're nearly at Twampa, I think that's what it's called. Something like that. Right, let's get up there. Well, here it is then, in all its profound glory. Uh, it's not that profound or glorious, is it? I'd be a little bit disappointed if I was, you know. But there it is, Lord Erifred's Knob, AKA Twampa. It's not called Twampa, that's why I put it on the screen. I can't even pronounce it. It's got about six letters in it that really look like they shouldn't go together. I don't know, typical Welsh name. Love you to bits, but yeah, sneaky little cairn on top. It really is a little cairn as well, isn't it? Wow, not much view to boot up here either. Just getting more of a bleak. And the clouds rolling in again. <sighs> it's nice. It's wicked, man. It's so fresh. It's nice to be up here when it's fresh, do you know what I mean? It's that time of year. I mean, it could be persisting it down with rain today, and it's not. So to have that fresh bite, pretty good. Right, there is a couple more spots on the trail before we hit the road, so let's keep moving. Holy shiznick, look at this freaking area. Absolutely mental. That little pool down the way. Honestly, this has got a wild camp spot written all over it in the summer. I'm bagging it, I'm coming back for it. Defo, near that pool, man. Might be an easy way to hike in, less distance, but... Wow! This area, stunning. Blessed to be here today, you know. Dang, another hot stopping moment with the blooming drone again. He didn't seem to like that fog and there was a bit of wind when I got it up in the air. It was high wind 
and then it went into auto land mode didn't do auto home it just started coming down and i couldn't see it through the fog could have been anywhere around here mate lucky i got eye shot of it and cancelled the landing and pulled it towards me but yeah i might not get it out again today we we'll wait till tomorrow i think oh bah! oh bloody hell and i've just drone shot this boggy mess i could have walked around it and now i'm walking through it what a muppet I was pretty sure that boggy mess was something. It was, it was on the trail map. It's called the Reflection Pool, and it gives amazing, stunning views down into the valley, and oh yes, it certainly does. Mate, and we should be cutting back at some point a little bit further up now, so good to go. Time's ticking. It's not a bad spot to live if you're a sheep as well, is it? Wicked, mate, they must love it. Living the dream up here, eh? One day, in my next life, I want to be a sheep. You do. Well, it wouldn't be a day's hiking if we didn't cut off piece and off trail at least once, you know, you know. Damn it, back up the hill. Oh, I've got to cut that way. Crikey. Oh, I was just loving this and heading towards it. Look, there's a trail that cuts all the way along the ridge. Why is that not on my trail app? That's <sighs> for next time. Legend. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. I'm glad I cut back on the right trail. Check this out. Wild ponies, mate. I'm absolutely made up. It's a perfect day. It's the perfect start to what should be an absolute mega trip. I mean, come on, it's not a bad start, is it? I'll tell you what, this is nice, cutting down with these views. It's not always I get to see the views. Oh, mate, we're getting a nice sunset as well. But check it out, the whole way down, and it's an absolute bog fest. I'm gonna be slipping on my ass left, right, and center. Absolute bloody nightmare, but I think this is the last bit before it hits the road, so fingers crossed, I'll see you at the road. Don't stray off the path. Just saying. <laughs> well, the home straight's in sight, back to the road then. Pretty cool, man. It was a good trail and an easy hike to follow. I'm pretty impressed. It has worn me out, though. It was a good, good six miles. And somewhere right over there in the fog is where the crib is. So, yeah, I think I'll meet you back at the crib. Mate, this feels well sketchy. Proper losing the light, alone on the moors, trying not to stray off the path. Oh, mate, I know you can't see out. This might not have been the best idea deciding to stay up here tonight. Oh, well, nearly back at the crib. Oh, pitch black, alone on the moors, and da -da -da -da, back at the crib. Man, you can see nothing through this camera. Right, let's get some scran on. I am famished. No way. I knew it was cold. What do you think of that cold? Freaking hey, mate, it's absolutely freezing in here. It's not even six o'clock. It must be like zero degrees already, man. I've got all my layers on my body warmer and everything. I'm gutted. I didn't get time to install that heat tube from the last trip. I've just been so busy doing stuff. And to be honest, I really would love to tell you what I've been doing, but it's a big, big surprise, which I'm hoping I'm going to be able to tell you about at the start of January-ish, which hopefully, if I'm honest, could be the time we're looking at getting another crib or the next crib. The GoFundMe wish list has been going absolutely crazy. We're well over halfway now. And if it keeps going that way, it's only going to be a few weeks before we've got the total. So in realistic terms, I think it's now time to start thinking about a car or what car we're going to get. I put a post out the other day. And again, I haven't had a proper chance to go through it, but I will. And I will put another proper post out. But it seems like the Citroen C4 seems a popular idea. Another Safira. And there was a couple of other cars that kept cropping up that a number of people have mentioned. I'm open to all ideas. As long as it's a car, and as long as it's bigger than the Zafi or as big as the Zafi we want something that's going to replace the Zafi can't use the Zafi because I use this in the week for school runs and shopping and stuff and we want something that's going to be able to like rip apart and drill holes in and also the Zafi's getting a little bit old I don't want to say so it's not going to last forever so that's why we're after a new crib and what we're after. So any ideas, drop them in the comments. Let's get the ball rolling with what we're going to buy for the channel.
Because let's be honest, like, yeah, it's me that's going to be doing it and all that malarkey, but it's you guys that are going to be watching it and also you guys that have helped me get it. So it seems the best idea to discuss it between us and come up with what we're going to get. And I will say, as well as the wish list on the buy, buy Me Coffee is concerned, massive, massive thank you to each and every person that's put a donation in, be it a pound or whatever it may be. It's all absolutely fantastic and really, really helpful. So, yeah, big love. More importantly for now though, oh, I need to get warm, which means I need to get some food on. And I've got a bit of a selection tonight. I've got choices, but I think I'm gonna keep it simple. Let me show you. I'm not gonna lie, the fridge da, 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 is pretty much overflowing and this is only enough for about four days. <laughs> I'm never gonna eat all this, there's no way in heck. But yeah, look, Camembert. Couldn't resist another one of them after the last one went so pokerama. Sausages for breakfast. And some bacons. And a thing. Oh, look, I've got this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cook it. Hang on. No, that way around. It's a pulled pork. I figured I'd be able to do it in the rib, uh, the ridge. Monkey. But I'm not going to faff of it tonight because I think it's going to take about half an hour, 45 minutes, and at least old can of gas. So it's a choice between. No, it's not. That's what we're having. Lemony pork chops, they look badass. On it like a rash. Let's go. Oh, mate. Nightmare. I just heard a knock, like somebody's car door. And fear not, this is not going to be one of them videos. I genuinely just heard somebody's car door. I thought there was a car around here. I just thought, like, because the other car that was parked there, he drove off a while ago. So I'm unaware of another car around here. And I just heard a car door go. There's no cars around here. Oh, mate. <laughs> I mean, the spot where they filmed a werewolf in London is like 200 metres that way. The mind's starting to race, you know what I mean? I always remember a tale my cousins used to tell me about, like, someone sleeping on the moors in a car like this. And in the middle of the night, I'm going to freak myself out here. In the middle of the night, I was sat here like this, and then they heard this, like, scratching on the windows. And it went all round the car, some scratching. Not knocking, scratching like claws. Of like maybe a werewolf, mate. Freaking myself out. Let's get this food on. Another car going by. It's a busy road, this is, you know. I mean, it's still early, it's six o'clock, but maybe that glossop spot would have been better just round the corner. Ah, well, screw it. I ain't moving now. Time for a bit of the moving game, don't you know? Oh, it's all different these days, darling. it? Oh, that comes out there. And that lives on there for a bit. Which means I can then. Get in there and get the cooker out. Right at the back, hang on. <sighs> yep. Oh, but wait, I need to make sure that this box is pushed forward enough so I can slide it out. My game on with the old cooker. Right, next up. Oh, gold. <sighs> Peas. Oh, really out there at the front of this box. Cheesy mash bud. Slowly going off that, not gonna lie. And it's bloody expensive from Tesco's now. 150 a wrap. Shan't be buying it again. And uh, yeah, oil. So glad I remembered to fill that up. Nearly didn't. And the piece to resistance, the garden peas. Happy days. Right, now I've got to put it all back. Bits of. Right, look, it's the first day of the trip. Let's not overdo things on the first day. It's three items to cook. I'm going to use one cooker. Play it safe. It may not be safe, but the intention to be safe is there in the terms of only using one cooker. Right, boiling water. That is for the peas in the mashed bud, which I'll reboil later after I've done the pork chop. Game on. I've just heard that car door go again. There's no car around here. Just saying. <laughs> oh, mate. I'm going to be alone on the balls all night. <laughs> Gotta freak myself out. Oi. Oh, this is mental. I can't believe it. The water's still boiling, and I'm kind of like pulling bits out, trying to like sort. I've just put the covers on, and earlier I pulled these out, and I've just pulled out the ridge monkey. Well, well, everything stinks of fish. Even these. Yeah. Oh, God, it stinks. You see how fish are cooked in here like two weeks ago? Honestly, I sprayed a load of Febreze in here last night before I left, and like let it settle. And the car smelt okay. The smell had finally gone after like near two weeks. But now I'm pulling stuff out. Oh, I can smell the fish again. I 
that's well overpowering. Oh man, I hope I brought the Febreze with me. I might have to spray this car down again tomorrow. It's a bit intense, man. <laughs> More importantly, eh? water's still boiling. I don't even know why I'm trying this. They're not gonna fit. I can see it straight away, look. Oh, hang on. Oh, mate, no, they're not, because there's one of them. Oh, bloody hell. One's dead thin and one's dead thick. Oh, that's stupid, mate. Oh, I'm gonna have to eat one and then eat another one because they ain't gonna cook right. Christ, that's the ridge at max. <laughs> I'm not using the other frying pan. Crikey. Right, look, one of these is looking really well done. Um, guess which one? I think it's the herbs and spices. It's not burnt. It doesn't look burnt on the other side, so... Oh, crap. Let's get it on a plate. I hope it's cooked. They've had about eight, nine minutes each, both sides. Look, there's one side, and there's the other. Let's see if it's actually cooked. I don't really know. I was waiting for this, like, fatty bit to get crispy, but... I don't think it's ever going to do that. So, uh, yeah. Man, you can smell the lemon, though. I just wonder if the meat's cooked. I wonder if there's a bloody bone in this thing or something. Maybe it's just my bad cooking. Seems cooked. I guess we'll know by tomorrow midday if it wasn't. You know what I mean? Right, let's get the other gubbins done. Ha! <laughs> Are you all steamed up? Sorry. I'm not being funny. That looks like a pretty good munch. Oh, pork chop, mash bud, garden peas. They're really good as well. Mm -hmm. They are hot though. They're like them old ones you used to get at school. Remember them peas at school? Sorry, I do apologise. Right, I'm going to try and clear this steam up. Feed me belly, watch a bit of football. And I'll catch you in a bit. Oh, I'm stoked with that. Oh, I need to cook the other pork chop off as well. Must remember. Oh, it's half past nine and the wind's blowing an absolute hooli. I've got to go check that spot out. Come on, let's go and have a look. Just double check I've got the keys. I really need to get one on around my neck or something. I'm definitely going to lock myself out of the car one night when I go for a wheel or something. It's well scary, man. No way. This is nuts. I can't even see the ground, mate. Oh, I'm not walking all the way up there. No way. Oh, can you even see that? That's mental. The fog is so thick. It's not a single soul around here. Feels here, right? Oh, crap. Puddle. Jesus. <laughs> Just saying. Damn it. Hey. Look. How foggy it is, mate. <laughs> mental. Damn it. All oh, puddles. Oh my days, I'm literally shivering, it's that cold. Kettle's got to go on, mate. No choice about it. And, damn it, that fuck's well wet, mate. Wet through, gutted. <sighs> right, I think, <laughs> I'm gonna have one last cup of tea, and then I'm gonna get my shiznit together and get me head down for the night. I don't think I'm gonna get any bother up here. It's too cold for anyone to come out tonight. <laughs> so I think I'll catch you in the morning. Hopefully, she'll be a good night's kit. Oh, morning. I'm not going to lie. It's a bit cold today. It was pretty cold last night. I wasn't too bad in bed. But I did keep waking up when like the quilt sort of crept off one part of my skin and then it froze solid and then woke up, pulled it back over and I was okay and back to sleep. But... It's supposed to be dry and sort of whatever today, but tomorrow is supposed to be snow. Oh my days. I'm going to be stuck in Wales in snow, traveling around Wales on single track roads in snow. This is going to be insane. But let me show you what we're dealing with today. It's a little bit blowy, I'm not going to lie. And if I get out, it's going to absolutely blow you out with a mic because I ain't got a muff on. But yeah, a little bit foggy. A little bit windy and very, very fresh. But I think I'm gonna get myself a little bit of brekkie on, a couple more coffees, and then head out to the day's destination. As for now, I think this is gonna be a wicked point to end the episode. It's been a spanking first day, man, and we lived to tell the tale and didn't get attacked by any werewolves last night. Always a good thing.
as always i really really hope you enjoyed it if you did all the good stuff hit the like button subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely hit me in the comments and as always you know you know take it easy enjoy the camp and stay stealthy working mate i've got another nine days of this bad boy let's go